What's up guys, my name is Dennis Yeltsin. I'm here to bring to you my first installment of a series called 360 Degrees with Dennis. The first episode is called History of Smartwatches. Enjoy and take a look. Hey everyone, this is 360 Degrees with Dennis, a series of disruption in and of wearable technology. All right, sounds like a good series, huh? Let's get started. This is episode one, the history of smartwatches. It's a great episode and has a lot of information about exactly where the smartwatch really started. So, starts with five most important things about the smartwatch, which is the five milestones to the existence of the smartwatch. It first starts with foundation, two, imagination, three, electronification, four, experimentation, five, commercialization. All right, so now we get into a little bit more chronologically. Here, we can look quickly, that foundation talks about mechanical watches, it's about in 1880. Then it goes into imagination, which is more about sci-fi stuff. Electronification, which is the real quartz watches. And experimentation, commercialization, and that goes into 1990 and 2010. You see the first smart watches right around then. And then today, we have watches like Samsung and Apple that develop today. So now we're going to go more into foundation. It happened around 1880 where you see these mechanical watches being formed. Uh, companies like uh, Patek Philippe, um, Gerard Perigois, uh, Rolex comes up next, and then Breitling is huge in 1880s. Just mechanical, nothing smart just yet. All right, so we're going to dive a little bit more into imagination. This is a time where it happens around the 1940s where TV and media really push all the future technology, like smartwatches. First major icon is Dick Tracy with all his crazy gadgets. Then you see Star Trek, all the live space things that goes on that we all wish we could do. The Knight Rider and that iconic smart car. And then Inspector Gadget, which we all know nowadays. So then we're gonna go a little bit more into the future where electronification of these watches become prevalent. Electronification occurs around 1970, where we see the first official digital watch, which was the Pulsar. Really, really cool looking watch for the time. Then, the next crazy watch that appears with the first LCD display is Casio. And then, just to add a little bit more of an idea to exactly how the internet has progressed over time, you can see as this develops through the uh, presentation, that the growth of transistors within processors go faster and double every single year, which goes into Moore's Law, which we'll be talking about later. So now we're starting to jump into experimentation of different devices and witnessing the technology being put into smaller devices because we're capable of doing that. This occurs around 1990, where we see AT&T decides to patent their own wearable wrist phone crazy, huh? They had advertising just like that. Then we actually see Samsung, a leading provider today, develop their first product, which was a smartphone in a sense where it could play MP3 music files. And then IBM created their first smartwatch with Linux running in the background with a fingerprint sensor, a accelerometer, and Bluetooth. It's insane. So now we're jumping into commercialization, which occurs around 2012, and we witnessed that growth to the present day. Now, the major, major smartwatch that actually appeared on the web was the Pebble. It was the first ever smartwatch that really kickstarted, in a sense, on Kickstarter. It was where Kickstarter really, truly started their crowdfunding project. It was their most successful project to date at that time. They raised over $10 million. That is a crazy amount of money, and it was unseen ever in a crowdfunding source like that at any time. And that's not the only time Pebble ever experienced growth like that. They actually just posted new things on Kickstarter and rose even more money. But at that time, they sold 70,000 watches. That is insane for 2012. Okay, so we're jumping into present day now, which occurs in 2015, obviously. So we see the emergence of different faces and different smartwatches, specifically the Samsung Gear S2, which features a round face. Then we jump to the Moto 360, which also has a round face. And it's, it's a pretty, pretty watch, not as expensive as, as the Apple Watch. And then we see here the failed Microsoft band. It's not very usable and it's, it doesn't look pretty. And then, of course, the Apple Watch, the prettiest and the most successful smartwatch. And yes, that gold watch is $17,000. Yeah.
So we've been talking a lot about the history of the smartwatch, but what really goes into the tech of the smartwatch? Let's talk a little bit more about it. So in every computer exists a processor which allows for processing inputs and everything that you know you do. You touch the screen, you, what you do, and how fast it happens. And this law is Moore's law. So it's defined as the number of transistors in a dense integrated circuit would double around every two years. But for the smartwatch and all computers really, it just does not matter anymore. So why doesn't Moore's law matter for wearable technology or for the future of technology for that matter? Think about it. How many more transistors can exist on a processor? Or how much smaller can a processor get? It's an interesting thought, and think about the fact that we might not even have the devices that are in our pockets tomorrow. Processors will get smaller and most likely won't exist, along with Moore's Law. So thank you for watching, and, and keep that in mind that 10 years from now, 20 years from now, we might not have a smartphone, but just an environment of technology. Thanks so much for watching, and keep an eye out for the next one.